Welcome back guys. The Mech 600 Junior is widely known and regarded as being one of the best single stage shot shell presses on the market today. Because of that, in today's video, my goal is to show basic setup and adjustment of the various dies and mechanical components of this press to make it easier to get the custom tailored ammo that you are looking for. As a little bit of background information for this press, and I'll throw in a little bit of a slideshow here, I purchased this press used a little over a year ago, and it arrived pretty much fully broken down as you can see here. The one challenge I did encounter right away after purchasing this was that the previous owner, attempting to be nice, I assume, had painted over most of the regular steel parts with a matte black finish. This presented two main problems when it came to the restoration. First of all, I found after removing some of the paint that there was actually rust trapped into the steel which had been painted over. Of course, I couldn't let this go as that rust would eventually spread and ruin all my hard work. Second, that paint became quite difficult to take off and I ended up heating it lightly with a propane torch and basically melting it to be able to wire brush it off and get it down to the bare metal. Once I had all the old paint and rust thoroughly removed from all the steel and had it to a nice clean albeit still somewhat rough polish. It was then time to wash the entire surface down with, I think I used either acetone or possibly mineral spirits, and then gave it both a coat of primer, let that cure, I'm, I think I just did one coat of primer, and then a coat of enamel over the top, trying to match the mech factory finish colors as closely as possible. From there, I got the base plate installed onto a inline fabrication quick change bench top, and then proceeded to install the top base of the shell retainer, the main bar, as well as the tool head and all the components that go on top. And for those of you who are familiar with the mech presses, will know that this is a pre-1982 manufacturer model that I have updated with some modern dies in certain instances, but we can get into that in a little bit more detail later. I purchased this press used off of a gentleman from the MiWi Shotgun Reloaders Exchange Group. The primer feed system here on the side was an add-on. I did not purchase it with add-on. And the adjustable charge bar here on the top, although not made anymore, was included with it when I purchased it. So that was definitely a plus. Parts and availability for these presses are still very prolific, as Mech still makes the 600 Junior, I believe the Mark V is the current iteration to this day and a lot of the parts are backwards compatible with the original models. So why do you ask what I need to adjust the dies on the specific press that I'm using? Well, for instance, or for starters, not all shot shell ammunition is exactly the same. There is a baseline semi-spec, but in the instance of this 12 gauge shell right here, not all two and three quarter shells are technically two and three quarters. Different hull manufacturers have slightly different lengths in the hull, and if you have a hole that's longer than another one, you'll note the crimp here is properly set up for this Winchester AA. Although if you're using a different brand hull that might be a little bit longer, your crimp's going to be off. Well, if you adjust for your, your crimp here, then your mouth taper, if you choose to use one, is also going to be off slightly. So, being able to fine-tune the dies on this makes a big deal. Without any further ado, let's jump right into it. In station number one, here in the back, you have the depriming and resizing and expander stage. What this does, let me see if I can get zoomed in here. Well, actually, let's start from the bottom up. On the base of this, you of course have your decapping pin. This knocks out the spent primers, as you can see there, when you lower the ramp, and I'll demonstrate this in a moment. Moving up from there, you have this black insert ring right here. This is your sizing ring. This goes over the outside of the hull and then sizes the brass portion on the bottom. To the best of my knowledge, I believe this is tungsten carbide. Feel free to correct me in the comments uh, if I have that mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that's tungsten carbide. On top of that, you have a jam nut just to keep this locked in place, and this is gonna be one of your adjustments. Allow me to demonstrate. First, you can either set the hull on the base plate or I like to actually start it up in. That makes it easier to make sure it is squared up. As you lower the ram, Obviously, the whole bottom's out on the base plate there. Continues down, and right there, it knocked out the primer. As you continue down further, that resizing ring goes down over the brass, 
and then stops. Now, depending on how thick the rim is, I personally like mine to set up that it's not crushing that rim when the, see here the arm is all the way down, but you're getting full sizing on the brass. Now, if you look up here in the top, this is gonna be a little bit hard to see, but if you note the top of that bolt head right there, there's nothing touching it. As I raise this ram, see that just bumped against? That is part of this lever arm that goes back through and is now camming against the surface of that bolt. When this hole was raised all the way up in, the top portion of this decapping assembly has an expander, basically designed to, to kind of open up the mouth of the hole so you can actually reload it and make it easier to get the components in. As I raise up on this handle, I hope you guys can see it here, the handle is actually pushing down on that bolt head and simultaneously forcing that hole out of the base of the sizing die. And then it goes the rest of the way up. If you do this quickly, sometimes they'll pop out. It depends on how much they need to be sized. At this point, I like to slide it down. See there, if I get the light to catch it, how it sized the base of that. And we also have the mouth opened up a little bit. Comparing that to a non-sized hull, you can see here how it smoothed out the previous crimp. It'll make it a little bit easier for the next step. So let's set that one aside. Your basic adjustments on this are going to be just threading. This is basically a sleeve. This needs to be threaded all the way up into the top here until it bottoms out. And then you make your adjustments based off of either moving the sizing ring up and down and then locking it with your jam nut. And then inside here, there is also an adjustment for the height of your decapping pin. That's the basic just on that. Moving over to the priming station, on most manual operated models, your primer cup is gonna be the exact same as this one. However, the actual primer push rod right here, whatever, I forget the technical term. It basically pushes the hull down on top of the primer to seat it. On the standard models, that is going to be solid. In the case of this one, you can see there, that is hollow to allow for a primer off of the primer feed tray to drop down here on the side. It drops down through that and into the primer cup when you do the final crimp. So for that, there isn't really much adjustment in this step other than making sure everything here is tightened down and in place according to the instructions. That should be good. And then we just lower this and that presses the hole down on top of that primer, it'll bottom out, and you can feel that easily in the ram. Raise that. Sometimes they stick, sometimes they don't. Either way, we just slide it down off of here, and then slide it into the slot for the powder and shot. Now with the pre-1982 models, such as this one, your guide assembly right here for the wad is not spring-loaded, it's just kind of retained in place. So in order to do this, the powder is the easy section. In the case of this adjustable one, I can adjust it with this little knurled knob here on the right. With the standard charge bars, you're going to have a charge bar set for a certain amount of shots. So you have like a one ounce charge bar, a seven eighths, an ounce and eighth, ounce and a quarter, so on. And then bushings that go in for your powder measurement on the right. They're relatively easy to use. There's not much complexity there. Just match your bushing number to a bushing table, verify your powder charge, and you're good to go. They're, they're really simple. In terms of powder charge now, I'm just going to lower the handle like so, and that puts the drop tube down inside the case. And then from here, I'm gonna try to do this because this technically requires like three hands. We just take our charge bar and push that way. What that did is drop that powder down through the little extension tube, down into the case. From here, again, because I'm doing this with a one hand short, I'm gonna let the ram back up. And now, in the current production Mark Vs, this will actually be still stuck down over the hull, which is what you want. In the case of this one, I have to manually pull it down. That's our wad guide. We then take one of the wads and 
kind of line it up there. When I'm doing this with two hands, I'll just guide it up over here. In this case, I'm just going to kind of set it there and hopefully I can get it lined up. Hey, there we go. And then run it down to press the wad down into the case. If you notice here, watch that little red tab as well as the little thing with the bolt through it right underneath those two tabs. Make it down from the bottom. As I lower this, those press up, and you can see this goes up to right around that 40 mark. Pardon the angle and the shakiness. I'm trying to do this one hand. Inside this like silver assembly that that red needle's on the outside of is a spring. And what's happening is as you're lowering this right here, the bottom of this drop tube is pushing down on the wad in here and putting it into compression to ensure that it's seated properly on top of your powder. If you have an air gap in there, it can be dangerous. That's why when you drop this down, it makes sure that wad is properly compressed down into your case. That can be adjusted. You can loosen this little screw here and basically this inner sleeve right here, this inner sleeve goes down through and that's your drop tube. This will slide up and down to adjust the, the tension on that. I have to look at my Lyman manual again. I believe recommended weight on that is roughly 45 pounds of compression. I would have to double check to make sure. But anyway, after that, so with that, it's gonna be in the bottom position and you can see here we got our, our weight on the needle. From here, we drop our shot. This is a little tricky to do with only two hands. You can either take it like this or kind of grab it. Sometimes th with the adjustable on the sticks, so you saw right there, and there we go. You don't have to worry, at least on the adjustable, and you don't have to worry when you pull it back a little bit about getting powder down, because the powder doesn't actually enter the reservoir here until this is all the way over to the right. So now this is prepped for the next stage. We raise the ram, and you can see here it moved off the bottom of our shot shell, which is good. We have our shot, we have our wad in there, it's looking good. I take it around the back here. This is our pre-crimp stage. Now, this is one of the pieces that I replaced with the components off of the modern mechs, simply because these are made of a polymer and don't scratch the holes. The older ones that were on there, they worked, but you could tell they were quite worn and it would leave light gouges in the outside of the hull. Now, for the pre-crimp stage, this is a floating crimp starter. Basically what that'll do is align itself with the crimps that are already in the hull so you're not messing up the, the mouth of that. They do make a eight point and a six point. I currently am running the Winchesters, which are an eight point crimp, relatively simple. Uh, this is just set up to pop it off. You just kind of pull it down. There's a little ball detent there and you can see all the, the fingers and stuff. This basically is just a nut on the top and bottom. You want to get this adjusted so you're getting enough reliable crimp starting, but not actually closing the crimp with this stage. Otherwise, you can push the pedals in too far. Basically, I have it set kind of in the middle, maybe a biased a little bit towards the top, but it's not a big deal. Put that back on. We just lined it up. That pops right on. We move over to the side here. And now we can do our crimp start. So as this comes down, watch that guide. It turns slightly there. That's exactly what it's designed to do, and it lines up with the previous crimps. I have it set to bottom out, and as you can see here, it's closing that maybe half, maybe at most two-thirds the way, and slide it back to the back. Adjustment on this, there really isn't much other than get its basic position there. Now, for the final crimp closing and if you want to put a taper onto the the actual mouth of the hole that's going to be this back die now this is super simple it looks complicated but it's really super simple the basic gist is how far down you want to push your crimp to close it is controlled by the silver screw in the center there is a little flat head on the top and a retaining nut on the bottom just to lock it in by adjusting that up and down you're just adjusting the plunger. There's a flat plunger in there that finishes the close. Now, as far as the taper, let me see if I can get up under here. You can see there's a guide to it. 
and then it steps down even further once you get kind of up in here. Pardon my light over to the side. In order to change that, you're actually changing something on the top of the press here. This little, let's see if I can get in on it, this little plate here that has kind of a, a cam shape to it is adjustable. And in order to adjust this, you back off this Allen head screw right here, and this slides either this way or that way. By sliding it this way, you lessen the amount of crimp going in on the mouth of the hole. By pulling it downwards, you increase it. And what that's doing, and we'll actually demonstrate here, let me lower this, so you can see, nothing's really touching. Okay, there it just went against. There's a little roller wheel right back in there that's touching that cam piece. Keep in mind, the vertical position of this basic tool head here is what's controlling the actual like closing of the shell. And that cam mechanism is what's controlling your actual crimp. So as I roll this down, and there it bottomed out. You can see there on that cam surface, how it rolls there. That is what's putting the, the taper around the mouth of the hole. So really simple there. Like I said, just adjust this. If you adjust it vertically, you're lessening the amount of taper. If you adjust it, did I say vertically? If you adjust it up, you're getting more uh, less crimp. If you adjust it down, you're getting more crimp. So now we take a look here. You see, I put a, this hole was slightly scratched from before, but I put a slight taper on the mouth of that. And enough to close all the pedals nice and evenly into the center. If you have the priming system hooked up, there is one other component that is involved in the system. You'll notice here, there is a tiny lever that comes across and sits on top of this housing. What that does is that lever goes over and that is the actuator to basically tell the priming system when to drop another primer into the prime station. Let's back out here and you can see as I lower the handle for that final crimp, that's going to pull on that. This lever comes down and carries primer down into the top of that. It drops in, and now if you look to the bottom, it's there sitting in the base, ready to go for the next shell. A couple other adjustments that are actually built into the press. You'll notice here at the bottom on the basically main piece that goes all up and holds the entire press together, there are two threaded bolt holes right there. And then if you were to go around to the other side, there are two on the back side as well. These give your adjustments, because this one is set up for 12 gauge, for two and three quarter or three inch shells. Moving up to the top, get in position here. I like to have the shot bottle threaded down all the way until it's tight into the base of here, and there is no kind of overing or anything set up in this one. For the powder, however, there's going to be a rubber O-ring and a brass, it almost looks like a wave washer, but a brass washer that goes in there. The base acts as a wiper to keep powder from sliding out across the top of the charge bar. I like to have this just down hand snug. You'll be able to feel, I like to set it up with both hoppers empty, but you'll be able to feel when that, when you have it screwed down too tight, it actually makes this uh, slide bar here very hard to move. So you basically adjust that back until you have a, a good seal but you're able to slide the charge bar back and forth to either side. The other thing MEC does recommend in their user manual for the priming system is to keep a little bit of silicone oil on the base of this just so these primers slide easily. You can see I got a can of it there in the background. I found that helps to ensure reliable operation on the primers. The other thing is when I got mine, there was a little bit of burrs on the inside of the actual primer drop hole that was causing them to bind up a little bit with a fine file and they drop reliably, no issues now. Other than that, the other thing that I would recommend keeping an eye on, because of this setup, it does somewhat walk loose, is this nut here on the back. I got it snugged down really well this time, but if you're loading a lot, sometimes that does like to walk loose. 
because the primer bracket just kind of comes around it in a C shape and this primer bracket will like to kind of slide every once in a while. You can get a good way by getting it snugged down right the first time, but it just something to be aware of. As far as consumables, the polymer fingers here on the wad guide are replaceable and the top and bottom halves do separate from each other both on the pre-82 model like I have here and on the current production models. So I'm just gonna load a couple of shot shells here with my Mech 600 Junior pre-1982 model that I have restored and have done the videos on. Let's get into it. Start as always, I just grab a hole out of the box from down here, kind of take a look at it, make sure nothing's cracked. Throw it in the priming resizing die from there. Reprime. There, I usually like to feel across the base of the primer, make sure everything's good. Slide that in. Powder, grab a wad. Shot. Pre-crimp. And post-crimp. Set so that down here. Grab the next one. Again, quick inspect. And then on that final crimp, of course, it's dropping the primers down in there. All right, now let's do regular speed. It's that slick. We are running one ounce of number eight magnum lead shot hardened. And quick little tip, if you ever want to inspect these holes, just grab a light. On the camera there. You can see the powder there in the base, the cushion and the wad, and then the shot up there towards the top. I do have a shooter's box. Uh, Basically, in this case, it, it's normally it'd be a case gauge, but in this case, I guess it's a hole gauge. I don't know. Leave it in the comments. But to just check for good headspace, max overall length, and so on. And you can see it drops in, drops right out. So we know we will have good chamber clearance. <coughs> I'm doing this setup like I have it here with the press actually up higher to where I'm pulling over top of it is the first time I've ever done this, I usually have it either kind of like maybe chest height or like belt line kind of height to where you're, you're working over top of it on that handle. And I will say, and we'll see how my back feels tomorrow, but doing it over top like this has actually been pretty comfortable and I'm nowhere near as tired after doing close to 400 shells as I would be normally. So for whatever that's worth, the setup's working pretty well. Um, I do put a little bit of oil actually on the press, on the main uh, beam that the whole top tool head is sliding up and down on. I do oil that. I oil the main pivot points in the linkage right back in here uh, just to make everything smoother and so on. The only thing you got to be careful of, don't get any oil or grease down on the very end of the drop tube. When I store it, I do, but I clean it off before I actually use it. Otherwise, all your powder and the, there's a little bit of carbon and stuff in the uh, shot as well that will get stuck to that and make a giant mess. So make sure you clean that. Other than that, it's pretty uneventful. Occasionally, the shot does get stuck when I try to discharge the shot. You see, I kind of have to slide it back and forth. At first, I was like, oh, I'm going to get powder in it. The powder does not actually dispense until this is all the way over, and it fills within, like, the last maybe an inch or less cavity underneath the actual powder dispensing side here. So that's a plus as well. I've considered going to, and I'll have to look into the cost on these, but just a fixed capacity charge bar. They, I believe, it's been a while since I looked at them, but I believe they have a little bit of, like, a polymer or rubber insert 
on the cutoff side of the shot so to not bind up like this one's doing here. Again, I have an experiment with it, something I'm looking into. Overall, I think there's an honest reason why the Mech 600 Junior Series has really been so popular for so many years, and that being that they are stupid reliable, they are very durable, and that they are designed to easily be worked on. When I received this press, I tore it down into its absolutely smallest components, taking all the nuts, washers, bolts, every single linkage arm, and everything apart on this machine. The parts diagram was a little bit hard to read because this is a bit of an older one, but if you're looking for those, Mech does have them on their website, and I can throw a link to that in the description below. If you have any other questions on these machines, feel free to drop a comment down below. I'll do my best to help out. Like I said, I've been using this one for a little over a year, and I had completely torn it down and rebuilt it back together, so I do know a little bit about how it works. Thanks as always for watching us here on the Reloading Craft channel. Like I said, if you have any questions, drop them down below. If you have a mech, let me know what you think. Personally, I love them, and for anybody looking to get into reloading shot shell, I believe this is an excellent press to do it on. Good value for the money, and if you're not loading hundreds and hundreds of rounds a week, definitely not slow either, even though it is technically a single-stage press. But that adds the durability, adds the simplicity, and easiness to maintain as well. Thanks as always. Stay safe out there. Keep on reloading, and sometimes that includes Shot Shell 2. It's also a fun one to reload. I'll catch you later.